This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. I've been waiting for you sitting right here in my studio in Moscow. And I want to say thank you for letting me come right into your space. Today, I'm going to cover the 13th program about the Apostles' Creed. We have covered so much material in this series, and that's why I want you to order the entire series, which is called The Apostles' Creed. It's 15 parts, and it comes with a wonderful study guide. And as I've told you, I wanted to teach the Apostles' Creed for years and years and years, and finally, I felt the release of the Holy Spirit to do it. And my friends, the Apostles' Creed really contains the core beliefs of the Christian faith. And if you know what is in the Apostles' Creed, then you know what you believe in. It's amazing to me that people just mindlessly quote it week after week as they go to their church and never really even think about what they're saying. But the Apostles' Creed, my friend, is powerful. And if you cover it point by point, you really learn what your faith entails. And that's why I want you to have the entire series, which comes with this study guide. And by the way, this study guide is enormous. (laughs) It is so full of all the points and the principles, the Greek words, everything in the series is in the study guide. And the reason we offer you both is because we've learned that when you read While you see or while you hear, it really reinforces the teaching down deep inside you. And right now we're offering you a whole package of books. One is called Paid in Full, an in-depth look at the defining moments of Christ's passion. This deals with everything about the passion that you probably have never heard. You know, I wrote a book called Christmas, The Rest of the Story, and people just loved it. Well, this is that kind of book. This is Easter, and it contains the rest of the story. And if you want something new to feed your heart with about the passion, please get this book. It will just thrill your faith. It really will. And we're offering you my book, which is called Build Your Foundation. Six must-have beliefs for constructing an unshakable Christian life. And we're also offering you my book, which is called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone crazy. I know it feels like the world has gone crazier, and I just prophesy to you based on scripture, it's going to get even crazier. We are headed into a period of delusion and lunacy. That's what is in front of us. And we need to keep our feet on solid ground, really know what we believe, and we need to know how to keep our head on straight in a world that really has gone crazy. The subtitle says, Developing Discernment for These Last Days, and the foreword is written by my friend John Bevere. But you should buy several of these because you will want to gift one to someone else. I know that. When you read this, you're going to say, wow, I wish so-and-so had this book. Well, then get it for them in advance and be prepared to give it to them. And because I'm teaching on the Apostles' Creed, I want you to have a copy of it. So if you go to our website, you can download on your computer this beautifully designed copy of the Apostles' Creed and print it on your home printer. And if you don't have a home printer, then you can reach out to us and we'll slip one in the mail to you. And when you get yours, you can frame it like I have framed mine. I like to have the Apostles' Creed in front of me. It really is the creed of the church. It states what we believe, and this is our gift to you. But if you need prayer, reach out to us. We're waiting for the phone to ring right now or for your email to show up in our inbox. And the moment we hear from you, we are going to really pray, and God is going to really move. He will respond to our prayers, and God will do what needs to be done in your life. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Well, today we're going to return to our subject of the Apostles' Creed. And by the way, if you want to order that series, please do it now because we're just going to offer it for two more days. But you may ask, what is the Apostles' Creed? Well, the Apostles' Creed is one of the oldest creeds of the church. It dates back to about the year 140 A.D. But the version that we're using in this program dates to 390 A.D. My friends, that is a long time ago. And the early church fathers referred to this version of the Apostles' Creed as the rule of 
faith. And it was actually a condensed compilation of the teachings of the apostles, and that's why they call it the Apostles' Creed. And it covers the core beliefs of the Christian faith, and in the centuries that followed those early years, all the way up into the moment, it was used as a truth filter to discern what was and wasn't authentic, genuine Christian doctrine. Now, we're living in a day today where there's all kinds of things you can hear on the internet. Some of it's right, some of it's not right. But when you know the tenets of the Apostles' Creed, it's a truth filter to help you determine if what you're hearing is right or if it is wrong. And today, the Apostles' Creed is lovingly quoted all over the world in churches, but many people don't really pay attention to what they're saying. They just quote it. It's like when Denise and I were growing up in church, we sang those wonderful hymns, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, Oh, What a Foretaste of Glory Divine. I mean, we just belted out those songs, but we really didn't listen to what we were saying. We were just trying to hit the notes right. And we missed what we were saying. And later when Denise and I were filled with the Holy Spirit, we were awakened to those words. And I remember thinking, what? I never knew what we were singing. Well, that's the way it is with the Apostles' Creed. Rather than just mindlessly quote it, think about what you are saying. We quote it in our own church in Moscow every week because it's one moment every week when the whole church is on one united page. We're all saying and proclaiming the same thing, and we boisterously end with a word, amen. And here are the words to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. That's very important for us to affirm because today we're living in a day when God as the creator is being questioned. But this is a basic tenet of our faith. Then it says, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. My friends, that is important because if you don't declare Jesus to be Lord, you're not saved. Who was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. That's important because if he was born of Joseph, then he was not God, but he was conceived of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus is divine. He really is the Son of God. That is our declaration. He was crucified, died, and buried. That is our faith declaration. He descended into hell, my friend. He really did. This is affirmed all over the New Testament. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Catholic or Universal Church. This is what we covered yesterday. And today we're going to cover the next point, the community union of saints. And then in the next two programs, we're going to cover the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. But today we're going to be discussing the communion of saints. And to tell you what is the communion of saints, I'm going to answer it in a roundabout way. And I want us to go back in time to Exodus chapter 3. You say, Exodus chapter 3, what does that have to do with being a saint? Well, I'm going to show you. And when you come to Exodus chapter 3, we find that Moses has had his encounter with God at the side of a burning bush as he was tending sheep in the wilderness. And the Bible tells us that that day as he was tending sheep on the backside of Mount Horeb, he saw a burning bush that was not consumed by the fire and he turned aside to see this phenomena. And Exodus chapter 3, 1 begins the story like this. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed, verse 3. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt, verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called out to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here am I. And when Moses drew near, the voice of God spoke to him in verse 5 and said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. And in that hallowed moment, Moses crossed the threshold that separated the natural realm from the realm where God 
called holy. And that physical location that Moses entered at that moment was so sacred that God commanded him to remove his shoes so he wouldn't carry the contamination of the world into that holy, sacred place. And the word holy, which is used in Exodus 3, verse 5 in the Old Testament Greek sect, is the Greek word hagia, and the word hagia is used from this point forward throughout the entire Bible to denote the holiness of God, the holy presence of God, or anything that God deems to be holy. And the place where Moses now found himself standing was a place where God dwelt that was so holy that no worldly contamination was permitted there. And that is why God instructed him to remove his shoes. But what is holiness? Well, both in the Old Testament, Greek Septuagint, and in the Greek New Testament, the word for holy is translated from various forms of the Greek word hagios. The word hagios, the word holy, means this. Something that even though it was once common has now become separated, consecrated, holy and sacred and never again to be regarded or used in a common way. This word hagios depicts anything that is in a category that is separate and sacred from other things. And I want to give you a very simple illustration to make the point. Here is my holy Bible. Well, the word Bible is a translation of the Greek word biblios. It means books or book. But the King James translators correctly put the word holy in front of it. So it's not just the Biblias, it's the Hagias Biblias. It is the Holy Bible. That word holy means the Bible is in a category all by itself. Yes, it is a book, but there's not another book in the world like the Bible. And today, if you go into a library, a library is filled with books and books and books, and there in the library on a shelf, you may find a Bible. But the Bible is different from all the other books in the library. It is separate. It is holy. It is sacred. It is in a category all by itself because it is the holy Bible. That's what that word holy or the word hagios means. Something that is consecrated, something that is separate, something that is in a category all by itself because it is so sacred. That's a good illustration of the word holy. But let's go back to Mount Horeb where Moses saw the burning bush. When Moses approached the burning bush, God told him to remove his shoes because he was standing on holy ground. And because that word holy is a translation of the Greek word hagia, it tells us that God's presence God's presence had consecrated and sanctified that particular physical spot on the mountain. Now, if you'd been there in reality, and if you'd looked at that mountain, you would have thought it looked no different from any other mountain in the entire mountain range. Though there was nothing particularly different about the mountain in terms of how you looked at it visibly, God's presence touched it. And when God's presence touched that mountain, that mountain changed. In that moment, the divine presence supernaturally separated that mountain from all other mountains and set it apart into a holy category. And in fact, it became so sacred in that very moment that from thenceforth, it was called the holy mount. And although it was just a mountain in the midst of many, many other mountains, it ceased to be normal from that day onward because God's presence changed its Status. Now, this is very important. And as you consider the word holy, keep in mind these ideas of separation, consecration, or being placed into a unique category. Why is this important? Because the Apostle Paul used this concept throughout his epistles in the New Testament in a powerful way to describe you and me. For example, in Romans chapter 1, verse 7, Paul wrote, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, and called to be saints. Saints. Well, today our program is about the communion of saints. Here we come to the answer about what is a saint. Well, when most people hear the word saint, they think of someone that is special, maybe somebody that has a halo over their head, someone in a very unique, different category where they're all right about that, but a saint may not have a halo over his head.
My friends, the word translated saint is actually from the same word hagios, which means a saint is someone who, though once he was just a common person, he's now become separated. He's become consecrated. He's become holy. He's become sacred. And now he is never again to be regarded or used in a common way because he's been separated and now he is sacred compared to other things. This means that God separated us when we were washed in the blood of Jesus. Paul used this word to describe Christians, and that means he used it to describe you and me. For example, when we came to Christ, we were just normal human beings like everyone else. But when the blood of Jesus cleansed us, say amen. And when the Holy Spirit came into our hearts, say amen. That divine presence literally sat us apart and made us so different that God immediately declared us to be holy, consecrated, special. My friends, this means you are special. You are different from unsaved people. You may look like a regular human being, but there's nothing regular about you. And by using this word and calling us saints, Paul was saying that we're called to be holy. We're called to be different. We're called to be sanctified. We're called to be separate from the rest of the world. And again, the blood of Jesus and the presence of the Holy Spirit caused us to be separate and to be consecrated. And now you and I are in a completely, entirely different category that is holy in the fraction of a second, quicker than the mind can even begin to comprehend. The Holy Spirit's presence within us removed us from the category of unregenerate human beings and moved us over into this special category. And we are set apart. We are consecrated. We are marked off and we've become holy beings. That is what the word saint means, which means if you're a believer, you may outwardly look like a human being just like everyone else, but you're not like everyone else. Just like the presence of God came down on Mount Horeb and made it holy, the moment the blood of Jesus washed you, the moment the Holy Spirit entered your spirit, God separated you, consecrated you, and set you apart. And now you are the home of the Holy Spirit. And as such, you are holy or you are a saint. We may look like regular people, but there's nothing regular about you and me. Say amen. That's what the word saint means, which means we should no longer think or act like we once did, but now we're new and different and holy, which means we need to think differently, talk differently, act differently. The Spirit of God lives inside us. Oh. That is just amazing. And just as God's holy presence sanctified the physical location of Mount Horeb, his divine presence in our life has set perimeters around us. And we're not like anyone else. We are holy territory. Now, when you come to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, Paul says to the Corinthians a verse which has great application to society today, believers in the church living in today's world. Listen to this. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall enter the kingdom of God, verse 11, and such were some of you. That's who you used to be. That's not who you are now. Notice what he says. But you are washed. You're sanctified. And you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The word washed depicts one whose former filth is cleansed off of him and he is cleansed so separate, thoroughly that he is now completely separated 
from who he used to be. That filth is gone. That is not who he is now. The word sanctified is the Greek word hagiazo, which is a form of the word hagias, which we have been studying today, which means something that even though it was once common, that's you in your past, has now become separated, consecrated, holy, and sacred, never again to be regarded or used in a common way, which means you should never look down on yourself because you are quite special. And in fact, this means God himself involved the process to sanctify us and even to justify us, according to verse 11. And this word justify depicts one who is legally approved, legally declared just, right, or righteous, and depicts one who has had all charges against him permanently dropped. They are gone because God has justified you and not just you and me, but Hebrews 12, 22 says, but you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, verse 23, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn that are written in heaven and to the God of the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect. That's all the saints that have been washed in the blood of Jesus. And my friends, this is the communion of saints. It's not just you and me. The church is filled with blood washed people and God has called us into communion with saints. And that's another reason why you need to go to church. You need to be in fellowship or in communion with the saints. I'm out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. Every week, churches around the world quote the Apostles' Creed, but they often don't stop to really think about what they're saying or what the words mean. So for many years, Rick wanted to teach every single point in the Apostles' Creed to help people understand these powerful truths. Finally, it's done. Rick says the Apostles' Creed contains the non-negotiable tenets of the Christian faith, and by studying every point and backing it up with teaching from the New Testament, this series will really anchor believers in what they believe. I studied intensively for this series, and it's like a banquet set on the table for anyone who wants to pull up a chair and partake of these powerful truths. I've done all the work for them. This 15-part series is available in digital and physical formats starting at just $24. We're also offering three of Rick's insightful books that you can order as a package for a discounted price of $45. This bundle includes Paid in Full, Rick's book on the moments leading up to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Build Your Foundation, a powerful book outlining six must-have beliefs to build an unshakable life and how to keep your head on straight in a world gone crazy. An essential book needed to navigate this season in a last day's world that seems to have lost its mind. Don't miss this special offer, this series, The Apostles' Creed, and this must-have book bundle. We also invite you to go to renner.org to download for free a beautifully designed copy of The Apostles' Creed. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I'm standing in the big studio in our new building in Moscow. You helped us build this building. Behind me is the big fireplace. It's covered. That's really the focus of the new studio. There's going to be library shelves and so many wonderful things. And I'm going to be sitting right here teaching the Bible verse by verse, diving into the Greek New Testament to bring teaching that people can trust to the ends of the world. And when I tell you the ends of the world, I really mean that. People are reaching out to us from the farthest ends of the world saying thank you for bringing this teaching right to where we are. And my friends, you're a big part of this because you're a partner. You helped build this building and I wanna say thank you to you. I've told you before, it's not about buildings. You just have to have the space so you can create programming. And in just a few weeks, my team is going to move into the second floor of this building while they continue to finish the first floor of the building. It's pretty exciting. But thank you so much for helping us. We really do what we say we're going to do, so here it is. And at the same time, we've been retiring the debt on the big Tulsa facility. That facility 
facility is so wonderful. And from that office in Tulsa, we are ministering to the needs of our partners. Partner ministry is not secondary to us. It is first place. We really mean it when we call people partners. And in that Tulsa facility, we're taking calls, making calls, touching lives, and strengthening people who need to be strengthened. That's God's mandate to us to strengthen those that are weak and those who need to be stronger. And we're reaching out by faith and through various means to touch people. And what a pleasure it is. It's really an honor to have partners. And that means you. Thank you for being a partner. And right now, we're paying off that Tulsa facility and a lot of it has already been paid off. That's miraculous. But it's been possible because of the grace of God, the favor of God, and because of your faithful and generous giving. And I want to say thank you on behalf of me and Denise and our sons, our family, and our ministry team for the way that you've joined hands with us to help retire the debt on that building. My friends, when that building is paid off, it will suddenly release a flood of finances so we can take the teaching of the Bible even further to the ends of the earth. And that's God's call to us. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And that's our task, to feed many the Word of God. And today I want to thank you for what you've done to help us build this facility and to pay off the Tulsa building. And together, we can get this done. My friend, today and the next two days are the last days we're offering you my series, which is called The Apostles' Creed. It is 15 parts. It comes in all kinds of formats with a wonderful study guide. And I just want to tell you that much of what I taught today about the word hagios is found in my book, which is called A Life Ablaze. If you don't have this, please go online and get it. But today we're also offering you a package of books. Now you can order the whole bundle or you can order them just one at a time. The first is called Paid in Full, an in-depth look at the defining moments of Christ's passion. The next book is called Build Your Foundation, Six Must-Have Beliefs for Constructing an Unshakable Christian Life. The next book, which I really want you to have, is called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy, Developing Discernment for These Last Days. And I remind you that I want you to have a copy of the Apostles' Creed. You can download it on our website and print it on your home printer. But if you don't have a home printer, reach out to us and we'll slip one in the mail to you. And when you get yours, you can frame it like I have framed mine. But please also let us know how to pray for you. Go online, give us a call. We're waiting to hear from you right now. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that the blood of Jesus washed us and the Holy Spirit entered us. And the moment this work was finished, you justified us, you sanctified us, and Lord, you put perimeters around us and called us holy ground. We're saints. And Father, we pray that you would enable us and encourage us to be in fellowship with other saints as well. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be back tomorrow, but remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, it says, where the word of a king is, there's power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.